All right, Rallo, how's it going, man? Everything is good, man. How's everything? Man, it's good. It's good, man. Uh, glad to have you here. A lot of people probably don't know who you are, so can you kind of give people, uh, you know, a little bit about your background and who you are, where you grew up, and everything like that? Ra, you know, I'm from Brooklyn, bed star, childhood friend of Fabulous. You know, we all grew up together in Brooklyn. And, um, you know, started out, you know, Fab DJ, uh, role manager, like, you know, like, I was there, like, I'm his boy. So you were there from the beginning, from before he blew up and anything like that? Yes, from the beginning, from the very beginning, yes. Yes. Okay, how'd you guys meet? Uh, you know, we lived across the building from each other, Bainbridge side, in the Brevoy Projects. And um, yes, just, you know, kids just growing up, playing outside, in front of the buildings till you get in the age where you like moving around projects. And then once we uh, became teenagers, uh, we uh, became BGS, like a boosting. We used to boost before the music industry. And um, yeah, we was BGS and we were just a group of young kids, teenagers, boosting, trying to, you know, make a way, make some money. And this was high school, junior high still? This is BGS started junior high school. Junior high, okay. Yeah. And was Fabulous rapping back then? He was rapping, but nobody knew he was rapping. Like, he was kind of quiet with his rapping. Like, back at this time, I, I could have been rapping before him. Like, you no. Know? But his brother, Paul Kane, was rapping. But you knew he rapped because he had come outside, breathe away day, he's rapping, this and that. Fab was always undercover with his rapping because... His raps was like, if he spit a rap to you back then, it looked like he was on already. Like, you know what I mean? So his rap was different. So I guess he didn't want to like spit that rap to people because they wouldn't understand it. He rapped like he already got a million dollars in his account. Like, you get what I'm saying? So he only had rap for his friends. You know, we in the hallway smoking weed, stuff like that. And he had rap for us. Like, we knew he was rapping. But everybody else, he kind of kept it on a, on a hush, you know? So Fabulous, like, he wasn't out there battling everybody like... I know that was a big thing in New York back then. Yeah, but nah, he wasn't a battle rapper. His brother, Paul Kane, is more like, could be a battle rapper. Like, you know what I mean? He'll chew your head off or whatever. But um, yeah, Fab wasn't a battle rapper. People used to kind of come around and bring people to battle Fab. Like, even back then, like, Big Fendi, Red Cafe, all these guys was around back then before nobody knew who they was. And, you know, they used to come around to the projects and try to bring people to battle rap Fab, but... Fab wasn't a battle rapper. You know, Kane and somebody else uh, battled him, but he wasn't never a battle rapper. Okay, and what was high school like for you guys? High school was good. Junior high school, everybody was like kind of together. So once we went to high school, everybody started getting split up different ways. Like I was in my zone school. I think Fab went to like art and design. But high school was still good and it was still, you know, boosting. It was still BGS at that time. So, you know. Did you graduate from high school? Yes, I graduated from high school. Okay, and what do you do after high school? Well, after high school, like I said, um, I worked before. Like, you know, I had like a side job before, but it wasn't, it didn't last that long. But me, it was more like hustling, like I could say. Hustling, I was, a, I gambled a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was like little minor stuff, like boosting, dibbled in drugs here and there, like, you know, stuff like that, you know, tries everything. At what point now, Fabulous, is he rapping this whole time? Is he taking it serious? Yes, he's rapping, but I ain't going to say taking it that serious. But he's definitely rapping. And um, even at this time, he used to be writing for certain people, like other rappers. He used to write for this girl before she used to pay him. Like little rappers used to come around and give him $1,000, $1,500 here and there to write a song or a verse and all that. And he used to do that. That used to be his hustle, too. And what, what year was this? Mm, I say nine six, nine okay. seven. Yeah. Okay, so it seems like things are. I mean, things are pretty good for him already. He's already making good money just doing some ghostwriting. Yeah. But I don't think he really like. At least you know I'm over here on the West Coast, so I don't think we started here about Fabulous till the late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Okay. So what's all going on in between? There? Okay, so in between then, I think like nine eight. Um. Around that time is when New York and Jersey, the tri-state, started hand fab because he was introduced to Clue. So before that, we used to just do demos in the hood and stuff like that. And, you know, the whole hood and the projects knew fab stuff, you know, because 
It was just, we did demos. So one day my boy Sax was actually, he used to always walk around with a headphones and Walkman and stuff like that. And he's playing a fab demo and he's singing it, like, you know? So this dude named Webb at the time, who eventually became Fab's manager, heard uh, Sack, you know, rapping lyrics. And he's like, yo, what's up, that's you? So, you know, he was like, yeah, that's me. And he was like, yo, if that's you, like, I got connections with DJ Clue, I can get you signed. So my boy was like, nah, that ain't me. That's my, you know, my, that's my boy Sport. So that's what Fab name was Sport. You know what I'm saying? So um, and he was like, yo, for real, like, if that's, I could get him signed, like, I got connections with Clue. So he was like, yo, let's go on the projects and let's see what's up. And they went in the projects that same day, that same time, and, and found Fab. And Webb let them know, like, listen, give me six months and I can get you a deal. If not, then you ain't got a deal with me no more, this and that, you know, six to eight months. And he went with that, and that's what happened. Okay, so he takes Fabulous as, like, a he's his manager, I take it, at this point? Yes, him and, the, and, him and a dude named Cheo, they was partners. So they signed Fab for, like, a six-month, eight-month contract management deal, and they start working on him from there. So they actually... um you know, got in contact with Clue because they used to do parties in college. That's how they knew Clue. And, um, you know, Clue started hearing them, Skane started hearing them, and they was liking what they heard, I guess. So um, they went up to the radio station. This is when Clue had Monday night and all that stuff on Hot 97 or whatever back in the days. And um, Fab went up there one day. They like He like, yo, I'm going to, you know, Clue tonight. So he was like, oh, all right, that's cool. Go to Clue. He don't go upstairs. I think it was like two or three times, like two times. It's like, yo, I'm going to Clue again tonight. And, you know, it was like, all right, cool. We waiting to hear you on the radio. He don't let him up again. So I remember it was another time, another week come. He was like, yo, I'm going to Clue. So we like, come on, man. Like, you keep saying you're going to Clue. When you going to get up there? We like, yo, listen, Clue don't let you up tonight, man. Let him know BGS going to be waiting outside for him, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, enough is enough. What's going on? So um, one day we're in front of my building. You know, me and Sack, the rest of the crew, we out there smoking, drinking. And, you know, our building is right across from each other. So his mother come to the window. It was like, rah, rah, he's on the radio. Like, we, we in front of the building. And it was like, okay. We all run upstairs to my mom's house, you know, cut the music on, the radio on. And there he was up there with Nori, you know, N-O-R-E. And Nori is hot at this time. 9-8, Nori was on fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? So for him to be up there with Nori, it was big. So we get up there and it's, and it was like, you know what I'm saying? And, and it went from there from the freestyle. And just by having the name Fabulous in his song, it's the F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S in the new West, circling in the U.S. It was just, he threw it in there. And Clue just, it stuck with Clue where he thought he was Fabulous Sport. You know what I'm saying? But ever since that freestyle happened right there, that night, it, it changed everything. Cause that next day was just like, just by going on the radio, even saying BGS. Cause like when he offended it, it was like BGS, clean thieves with Avery with clean sleeves. Twist shot honeys with 20s of green leaves. We was like, woo! And it, it was on after that. BGS was definitely like on the map after that. Like, you know what I'm saying? So the hood knew who Fabulous was, but remember, you still didn't get a picture of his face. People from every, every, everywhere else don't know how he looked, just people in the, in the hood. So after that, now he started doing clues now, like all clue tapes, he's starting it off, and, and you still don't get a vision of how he looked. But then he was signed for clue for like two, three years before he really actually. Pop with the little mole superwoman joint. So he's signed a clue. Yes. And, and things are kind of going slow. Is he putting out music or mixtapes or? No, he ain't putting out mixtapes. He just doing whatever clue acts. So, you know, clue, he doing songs on, you know, freestyles on clue mixes. You know, every time he come out with something new, Fab is on it. Like, you know what I mean? That's how you promote Fab. And this is another story that clue told us years after, right? So the day that Fab was on, Night, Hot 97 with Nori, you know, from Brooklyn doing all this. Jay-Z supposed to have called and asked Clue, like, yo, who's that dude? Like, who's that kid from Brooklyn? And, and uh, DJ Clue lied to him and said, yo, this is my artist. I signed him. And he ain't signed him yet. But he just lied and was like, yo, I signed him. So that's what made Clue just like, you know what, I'm taking him. Because Jay called up there for him that night. And, um, and that's what happened. And Clue was like, nah. So Jay Z wanted to sign Fabulous. I mean, I ain't gonna say day. he wanted to sign him. He called up there asking about him, like, yo, who's this kid from Brooklyn? Who's that? And then Clue was just like, yo, that's my artist. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's how yeah. it went. Damn, that'd have been crazy because Rockefeller was hot as shit back then. Exactly. Definitely Fab would have loved to have been on. You know what I mean? With Jay at this time, like, yeah, but Clue ain't never say nothing about that. Like, you know what I mean? So he signed the Desert Storm. 
And you know, everybody it was cool, like, damn, all right, signed the Desert Storm, but now you gotta get a distributing deal. You just signed the Desert Storm, that's it. So he's doing all these songs, 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 you know, for Clue, big enough, you know. And um, once the little Mo thing came about, you know, Clue did that beat, he produced it. So it was just like, you know, I give you this beat for free if you let my artist get on it, like, you know, and, and it worked out. He got on a Superwoman, and then that was it. He was out of here after that. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.